Hello and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today I have another bonus episode. Uh, today is on a Rust's release of async await support. Uh, this beta was announced on September 30th, and uh, November 7th today is supposed to be the 1.39 release with uh, full support for async await. Uh, this is very exciting. They've been working on it for years, as they point out. For example, even just last year with the Rust 2018 edition, they included uh, async and await as keywords in preparation for uh, this occasion. Uh, this is very exciting. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with async await, it's basically a way of doing multi-threaded code as if you're writing single-threaded code in an efficient fashion. Uh, these are also called stackless coroutines. This contrasts with stack full coroutines, such as what you get in the Go language. Uh, modern async await popularity uh, picked up with the support when C Sharp supported that. Um, and languages since then, such as ECMAScript and Python, have picked up support. Uh, next year, C20 is going to get uh, stackless coroutines as well. Um, so this is pretty exciting to have this happen here. It makes your code easier to write while still being efficient. Uh, in order for Rust to do uh, asynchronous execution, you need to have an executor. Uh, today we're going to be using this Tokyo library, uh, which is a multi-threaded work stealing uh, based task scheduler that supports network uh, I.O. among other things. And uh, more specifically than that, we're going to be using the request library in order to be doing high level HTTP requests. Uh, make life easy for us. Uh, I assume this is named after the requests library in Python, but spelled differently for distinction. And rather than t showing everybody my IP address, I'm going to be uh, using this uh, place JSON placeholder uh, service, which is pretty fantastic uh, for simple demos like this. So here's an example of how it would work in ECMAScript, although they're not using the async await syntax, which is available. They're just using the promises API directly. Um, so they're going to request their uh, uh, URL here, which I'm going to copy for demo in a second also separately. Then they're going to get the initial response at some future point. This happens behind the scenes because uh, JavaScript is always uh, single-threaded from your perspective. But behind the scenes, it actually goes off and waits for something and comes back. And then once we have an initial start of our response, we'll say, please parse the body as JSON. When that comes back, we'll log it to the console. So there are two separate awaits happening here. If we try it, there's our result there. Um, then notice this is very similar looking to the Rust example we saw here. They're going to do a request to some HTTPS URL, wait for the initial response, parse a body as JSON, and then wait for that response and print it out. Just to prove what this stuff looks like here, I'm going to paste this URL. Notice here we have raw data, which is JSON or look at Firefox's parsing of it. We can do to do's two, which has a different title than to do's one had. Uh, so that's basically the, the service we'll be requesting today, just fake to do items. Uh, based, and I'm gonna base my example on this uh, request uh, demo example from their uh, readme, but I'll be going beyond this. Um, uh, here's my example here and uh, let me get up a command prompt to work with as well over here. Uh, in order to uh, have Tokyo in charge of executing, ex ex executing things, I need an asynchronous main and tell Tokyo to take over here. And I have extracted out this request that we saw from their demo into a separate function uh, for convenience. I've also given it a parameter such that I can get any to-do item. So I have my base URL that goes in here and then I have my ID that goes in there, and I do a request where I wait for the initial response, parse the JSON, and wait for the final response, and provide the result back out to whoever called me. Um, <clears throat> it's an asynchronous function, so I can call await. Main is asynchronous, so I can call await. So I'm going to get to do item one, which we've seen already, await it, and then uh, print the result. Notice await is postfix in Rust. Most other languages that we were talking about have await as a prefix keyword. I'm also timing. Uh, right before I do the request, I'm going to be uh, starting a timer, and then I'm going to print the elapsed time when I'm done before I print the result out. So this isn't the best profiling in the world, but it'll get the job done for today. If I come over here, I use cargo, which is the Rust 
uh, build system and package manager uh, to run this for me. We'll get to see this uh, building and running. There's our JSON result. It's been parsed by the Sir JSON uh, library. Uh, and so I will have access to that data if I want it. This took about 130 milliseconds. If I run it again, just to prove things, there's 150 milliseconds, 130 milliseconds, 160 milliseconds. So we can see about what kind of time it's taking in, on my box at the moment, network connection, whatever it happens to be. Uh, by the way, before I get a little bit further, I want to make sure we don't miss this uh, cargo. This is the project uh, definition that I have right here. This is just a very minimal uh, cargo init thing with a few changes. The main things I did is I added these dependencies using a futures library, the request library, the sir JSON library for parsing JSON, and Tokyo for executing things. Um, that's all I've got here. It's not really elaborate in terms of my project setup or dependencies. Back to my uh, uh, main, uh, uh, my program here. You know, so this is how things are working. Now, it's sort of uninteresting to show this example because even though it's asynchronous, I'm just awaiting it immediately, and so I won't be getting really any benefits out of using Tokyo. Let's do this in a loop instead uh, in order to make this more interesting. Let's do uh, a loop from one, ID one to ID, uh, let's just do, uh, let's do 100 actually. No, yeah, I'll just do 100, it'll be fun. Uh, 100 requests. Hopefully, uh, JSON placeholders that hate me that much. They claim to handle millions of requests a month. I'm just a drop in the bucket, right? Um, don't tell them I said that. Okay, oops, I missed my end. For ID in 1 to 100. Let's do the request. And let's say the result into a vector, which might be called a list or an array in a different language. Um, let's do results equals... Um, vec colon colon new yeah it, the rust server really hates me at the moment because that didn't parse then i'm going to say results dot push i um result and we'll need to make this immutable i mean mutable in order to be able to modify it in rust by default everything is immutable and then we're going to make use of our thing here let's show the last response so we don't bore ourselves with to tears with too many things and we'll have to tell Rust, yes, we really mean it. We know we have one, so it'll crash on us if we don't. And instead of always requesting to do item one, we'll request the ID in question. So now we are doing 100 different requests, storing the results, and only bothering to show the last one. Let's see what happens if we do this. Cargo run, it'll build first. Waiting, waiting, and now it's running, which should be a little bit slow to do 100 requests. Three seconds, let's try it again. Always make sure our timing is relatively sane. Again, this is poor man's profiling at the moment, poor person's profiling. Um, and uh, so about three seconds being pretty consistent. Ideally, these requests are going in parallel, but that's not what's happening here. After every single request, we're waiting for it and then putting the result on. So we're doing 100 requests, requests sequentially, one at a time, and not taking advantage of the asynchronous support. That's really sad. So let's do something different instead. Let's, instead of getting results here, let's store up our requests. Um, and so instead of awaiting it immediately, let's store our request itself instead. Okay, that's a good start so far. We still need our results. I could write another loop to go through this, um, but uh, probably be uh, risk of doing things incorrectly. Um, I'm going to take advantage of a different library out there that can just await in parallel on everything for me because I don't want to wait on them sequentially anyway. Uh, so I'll also be back where I started. So I'm going to use this futures library, which is going to be really handy for us. We're going to do try await await all. Oh, I missed my colon. That's why I was auto completing for me. There we are. Try await all. <coughs> Try join all, sorry. Wrong name. Okay. <clears throat> and let's get our <clears throat> results here. Let results equals try join all. We're going to join on all of them in parallel um, and await the results simultaneously. So now, <clears throat> instead of doing them one at a time in our loop, we're going to batch up all the requests and then await them in parallel. 
and let's see what happens now. Cargo run. 0.4 seconds. I'd say that's less than three seconds. Let's run it again, see how it's doing. So it looks like 400 milliseconds is about where we're sitting right now, which definitely is much faster doing these in some kind of parallel fashion. Exactly what's going on behind the scenes in Tokyo and across the web uh, and across the internet requests, I'm not sure, but clearly some kind of parallelization is happening here instead of synchronously doing one request after another. And this is a big a part of why we care about uh, asynchronous requests. Notice I'm still just printing out the last one here. Um, anyway, uh, nice thing about try join all is whatever order they get done in, it will make sure that it stores them in the order that I requested them so that results are in order, again, whatever result they, whatever order they happen to actually finish in. Uh, I hope this has been valuable to people. I'm uh, looking forward to uh, this in Rust and other languages as well. I think it's fantastic. Uh, see y'all next time. Bye.